morning, dear colleagues. I also would like to thank Interpol, Interpol for bringing together practitioner, practitioners from the national and international field. It's a welcome opportunity for all of us to thank Interpol for the work Interpol is doing in support of our work, but it's also, I think, a good opportunity to think about ways to even improve this cooperation and to see during those next two days in what areas we would like to see Interpol taking even more initiatives. Um, as you know, the ad hoc tribunals and special courts will close in a very near future. Uh, we are dealing with our, our last cases. Uh, as a result, in three, four years' time, the majority of the remaining burden of remaining war crimes cases coming from our different field of activities will be on, on your shoulders, um, which is an additional reason why I think we all together should invest in uh, working together and uh, doing uh, this work together. As you know, ICTY, we're in our final phase. We have three last trials ongoing, uh, Karadzic, Mladic, Hadzic. In uh, three years' time from now, I would think, 2014, 2015, we will close um, our doors. In preparation of uh, these moments, we have over the last years very much invested in working with national authorities. Um, we are an international tribunal with a relatively <coughs> positive record in this sense we have issued indictments against 161 persons but of course it's very little compared to the number of crimes which have been committed in Bosnia alone and I'm pleased to see colleagues from, from Bosnia there are still many hundreds of cases to be to be conducted and as an international tribunal we have really tried over the last years very much to, to invest in um, trying to support capacity building, uh, supporting training and needs in the countries of former Yugoslavia. We have also, for your information, the international prosecutors from the ad hoc tribunal and special <coughs> courts. We have, uh, or in the final process of uh, finalizing uh, a best practice manual coming from the different tribunals, 350 pages of very pragmatic approach to international investigations. We have launched it two weeks ago within the International Association of Prosecutors. Uh, so it will not be a public document, but of course I have no doubt at all that we will also make it available within the, the Interpol circle and uh, to make it available for all of you who are uh, dealing with those cases. It's of course very much from an international perspective, but uh, I'm confident that in a number of areas it will be useful for your work uh, too. The conference is also about managing information. So as I said, once we are closing our tribunal, we want to make sure that information is still there to be available for, for, for your offices. And what we have tried to do with our colleagues in the former Yugoslavia is to really put in place mechanism to facilitate this exchange of information. We have in the Hague and in the OTP a database of nine million pages of documents in relation to the conflict. Uh, to make this information available for national war crimes prosecution offices, we have uh, remote access systems put in place in Serbia, Croatia and Bosnia. But what we have done also three years ago and which has been a very, very efficient tool is to put with the support of financial support of the European Commission colleagues from the former Yugoslavia in The Hague. So we have for the last four years uh, three liaison uh, prosecutors, one from Serbia, one from Croatia, one from Bosnia and Herzegovina, integrated into our structures and we consider this as being a very efficient model. In the last year alone 200,000 pages of documents have been taken out by those colleagues out of our databases to be used in uh, national proceedings. And we speak about 200 requests for assistance coming every year from the three countries to our uh, office. We are today receiving much more requests for assistance than uh, requests for assistance leaving our office. But we are not only receiving those requests from countries of former Yugoslavia, but also from from your country. So over the last year, over the last 12 months, we got 100 requests from other um, specialized offices uh, outside the countries of the uh, former Yugoslavia. Um, information is key, information exchange is key. That's why we will make sure that once the tribunal is closing in three, four years time, three, four years time, that this mechanism which will take over the remaining functions will still facilitate access to these databases. Um, you probably know that uh, the Security Council has, has decided to put in place a so-called mechanism for the international tribunals, which is one mechanism uh, which is covering ICTR, the Randolph Tribunal, and ICTY, with two offices, one in The Hague, 
one in, in Arusha. And one of the mandates of this uh, mechanism is not only to deal with remaining appeals questions or provisional release or witness protection, but also to make sure that information remains very much available. Before um, concluding, because I know that you have a very, very busy agenda, let me say two words on, on two specific issues uh, I think are of interest and where I would like to see Interpol even being more active. One, of course, in, in our global world is this, this interlink between violations of international humanitarian law on one side and corruption and organized, organized crime on the other side. Uh, organized crime corruption is not a core function of the International Tribunal, but we, we see it every day in our, in our work. And of course, um, there is a, an important exchange of information um, uh, needed. When I left the, the Belgium system, and I'm also very pleased to see colleagues from the Federal uh, Prosecutor's Office uh, in, in Brussels, when um, I left from my previous organized crime field to the international justice field, for many of my colleagues it was like joining almost a different planet with totally different crimes. But we all know that reality is that everything is very much interlinked. And this, of course, we have seen uh, in, in all our investigations at the ICTY, starting even before the conflict, where there have been very important money laundering operations by the Milosevic regime, where we see very important trafficking activities during the conflict, uh, weapon uh, trafficking, of course, uh, to, um, um, because of, of, the, of, the, of the different embargoes. And where we have seen that, of course, politicians, um, the economic level, and um, organized crime groups were working very, very closely together. We have seen that during the conflicts um, that um, special units were created, mainly composed by people from organized crime groups. Um, and those persons are still active today. In um, one of the cases we worked two years ago, we, we, we saw that one of the so-called Red Barrett's members was very much involved in one of the largest bank robberies in, in Sweden. So the, the link between those different fields are very, very strong. And if the countries of former Yugoslavia today are very much facing corruption and organized crime is because there have been those very, very close links. The reasons I'm mentioning this is that I think that when a conflict is ongoing or after a conflict, when we are dealing with violations of international humanitarian law, it's very, very important that in parallel, those who are members of organized crimes are uh, prosecuted uh, too. Uh, we need uh, a coordinated approach in this regard. Last element I wanted to mention is hunting fugitives. Um, I think for all the international tribunals that the biggest challenge, we have our limited capabilities, our limited operational capabilities. How are we getting our fugitives? Um, our tribunal is the lucky one because none of our fugitives is still at large, but we know that we had to pay a very high price in the sense that we had to wait 17 years before the last fugitives have been arrested. There have been opportunities, missed opportunities in the past where the international community has not done uh, its job. But okay, today we are in this uh, fortunate situation. And one of the reasons that we are there today is because within our tribunal, a uh, um, unit was created, uh, a tracking unit, which uh, was specialized in looking for, for, for the fugitives. Tracking unit, which, uh, by the way, was, was of course working and coordinating uh, with uh, Interpol. Tr tracking unit, which was on one hand um, receiving uh, information from intelligence services um, in relation to the whereabouts of fugitives, very much trying to coordinate work of intelligence and operational services uh, on the ground, running our own sources during a certain period, uh, and very much watching what national authorities are doing or not doing in relation to their responsibility. Because as you know, we have or had to report every six months to Security Council about uh, the uh, level of cooperation. And um, uh, one, one element, a factor in this regard was of course how genuine were Serbia, for example, in relation to the rest of the fugitives. And by having our own tracking unit on the ground, we could of course assess if uh, this work is done correctly or not. I um, would like, by, uh, would like to, to finish my, my short intervention here by saying that we, we have seen within our office that it's a um, very useful tool but we have also seen very much our limitations because, of, of course, we, we don't have, there were two analysts, two investigators, uh, one chief of operations dealing with those issues, but, of course, it's very, very limited compared to the resources at a national level or international level. So I think one of the biggest challenges
for international justice and for sure for the ICC, who will be the very soon the last international tribunal, um, arrest of fugitives will be the main issues. And there, I think, um, uh, despite already the strong efforts Interpol is doing, uh, more can be done. I wish you a very productive two, two days. I'm very pleased to, to see that the winning team in Interpol is still the same for a number of years. So expectations are very high and um, looking forward to, to see you very soon. Thank you.